millions of people can talk to the same logic. You know, Uber can really exist on blockchains now. Conference was awesome. Thanks for having me. What the hell? Moi, my definition for Moi, of course, is that it's a context-aware peer-to-peer protocol enabling the fabric of the stateful internet, right? So the stateful internet, this is an idea that we touted in Server Labs as being the cornerstone for enabling a personalized, digitally interacting world, right? The internet is made up of people interacting on it, and today peer-to-peer technologies are more about nodes and machines talking to each other rather than people. Right? and people and individual assets, they all work still, even, even though we're working on a distributed framework, uh, Ethereum in a lot of sense is still centralized. Right? Think about your assets. They're just ledgers which are centralized again because only one person can talk to a contact at a time. Yes, multiple people have to participate in the approval of changes, but it's still only one contract and everyone has to wait in a line. Is that really decentralized? It's not. Right. So some of the key benefits of what we get with Moi, of course, is these are the three big ones. The infinite scale network, a network that grows forever, right? And it's a network that grows forever and becomes faster as it grows, right? It's not a network that loses uh, its performance as it grows, like most other blockchains today, right? It's a network that can scroll infinitely, and as it grows, it gets faster and more hyper-parallel, right? The point is that if me and Sartak are talking to each other, and let's say Rahul and Ganesh are talking to each other, why should we have to wait for each other today? Today in Ethereum blockchain, or any blockchain for that matter, they need to be ordered sequentially, regardless of the fact that they're, they're not bothered. The fact that me and Sartak are talking in Goa versus someone else in Bangalore, should that really affect you? Why should you have to wait for someone completely irrelevant into your context, right? And all that is done with what we call light-speed finality, which is achieved using our new uh, state-of-the-art consensus algorithm that relies on participants, interactions, and all these perimeters that we're talking about today, right? Moi, what we do is we isolate the logic execution from the interaction execution, right? In Ethereum, that's like smart contract versus transaction, right? What that means is, today in Ethereum, the EVM does the whole job, processing the interaction, transaction, validating it, and then executing the code inside it, and then performance, everything is done by the EVM. In our case, we decouple this so that the actual executing of the logic code is independent. And that means now we can support multiple different types of runtimes. That's what we mean by ability to provide a different kind of transactional experience that you don't get in Ethereum or, Moi, uh, sorry, in, uh, Ethereum or Bitcoin for that matter. You only get it in Moi, right? We're talking about Coco. This is what we're all here for today, so let's move it along, right? So what is Coco, right? Coco is basically a context-oriented and statically typed programming language. It's pretty high level and indent-based, so it's Pythonic in nature, so it's very readable. Right? It's a language as a whole. It prioritizes readability, auditability, and safety. Auditability being a very important point there. Right? I, this program language was designed to prioritize the auditors being able to catch problems more than being giving, uh, being develop, developers being given more power. Right? Developers have, it's, like, it's almost like you're on rails at that point. Right? As a blockchain programming language, the job is not to give developers infinite access to the state management, but rather to give them control so that they cannot make commonly occurring mistakes. Right? In Cocoa, it's basically impossible to make an integer overflow error. Right? Because the language won't let you. Language will let you know you have to catch the exception. Right? In Ethereum, it just happens. You have to, you have to know to catch it. If you don't, you basically deploy it to chain, and then you, you know, basically wasted a lot of money at that point. Right? So the language helps the developer write safer code, and it also makes it easier for auditors to catch mistakes. We'll see all that as we go into building. But more importantly, we also built Coco to prioritize stateful runtimes, like PISA. The fact that there's a participant, there's states, interactions, context. These are all native objects available in PISA, and then by extension to Coco also. Right? And obviously, we developed it to be able to design and develop logics for Moi. Right? You can obviously check out the website and at cocolang.dev right now. Yeah. Take a sip of coffee. <laughs>